All right, in today's video, how to do an if-else statement in a Lambda with the filter built-in function. In a previous video, um, I had done the same thing with the map built-in function, and so today we're gonna look at the filter built-in function. So let's get started. So let's say I had a list of strings here, in this case, cat, dog, and cow, and we're gonna assign this to my list. So how could you return an output, return a response, where we say just get cat and cow. And of course we know that cat and cow both start with the letter C, so we could kind of use that as a filter and say, okay, if, if the string has the letter C, um, let's return those values. So do you know how you would do that with a lambda function and with the filter function and an if else statement? If not, tune into this video and we're gonna learn exactly how to do that. <clears throat> So the first thing I want to do is just clear the screen and let's just look at my list again. And so how would you build this up with Lambda and the filter built-in function? So first what you'd want to do is wrap things in a list built-in function just to make it readable. And then we would have our filter built-in function. And then in that we would have Lambda and we would have our list, which in this case is called my list. So back to the lambda, the most basic version of the lambda would just be x semicolon x. And just like this, as is, this can run. And we can click enter, we can run this, and we're going to return the original list. So of course it's going to return the original list because we haven't actually done any filtering. We're not really assessing to see if it meets a specific filter or a specific if else. So we're just returning everything. And this is the basic building blocks of the Lambda built-in function and the filter built-in function using Lambda and an iterable, in this case, my list. Cool, so now that we have our basic function, how do we set up some filtering such that we can take our building block function and return now just cat and cow? How would we do that? Well, I'll give you the answer right away. So what we would want to do is C in X. It's that simple. And we can return this, and we can see that we just get cat and cow. Now, of course, if we wanted the opposite, if we just wanted dog, then we could do C not in X. And when we return that, of course, we get dog. So these statements, these expressions, are basically opposites. It's also good to point out that you can see how the expression is taking place right here right on the, the right side of the semicolon, and we're not using a if statement, we're not really using that if else syntax, we're just doing it straight up like this. And this is the best way, the most appropriate way to do any kind of filter expression in a Lambda. So you might be asking, okay, but what about the if else statement? And so I just kind of want to uh, make it clear that Generally, for a filter built-in function, you actually might not need an if-else statement. Um, and this syntax is going to suffice right here. You just want to have your filter going on here to the right side of the semicolon, and that's all you need to do. You don't need an if-else statement. But in the next section of this video, I am going to show you what happens with an if-else if statement because it's a little bit weird, it's a little bit interesting, and it'll help you learn more about the filter built-in function and about Lambda. <clears throat> so let's get into it. Let's do an if-else statement um, within the Lambda. So here we have C and X. And what you would want to do is X if C and X else, let's say, false. And we can run this and we can see that we get cat cow uh, the exact same output that we were expecting and so you could argue that this expression is just as successful or just as correct as the shorter form that i showed you before so you could basically say that these two are equivalent but there's a little bit more nuance and that's what i'm going to show you now so let's go back to our longer expression here and let's say instead of L, or instead of false, let's say we did none. So that's going to run again just fine. Um, but let's say instead of none, we did say true. Well, we're going to get all three of our values because our else is truthy. 
So if C and X is true, and then the else is also true, right? And then if we did say something random, like let's just say we wrote 100, which is also a truthy value, then we're gonna say if, X, if C and X is true, so that's true, else 100, so something that's also true. So basically what's going on here is you're saying uh, if true, else true. So let me just replace that here to show you. So X, if true, else true. Okay, we're returning all of the values. So let's just say X, if true, else false. Well, we're still going to get all three of the values because every value here is truthy because every value here, um, you know, has a length of more than zero. So all of these values are truthy. And let's just say we did if false, else false. What do you think is going to happen? Well, we're going to get none of those values. So you can see how this if else statement stuff is a little bit weird. And it basically just becomes unnecessary because you're saying, cool, like the if statement makes sense, right? So if in X, if C in X, like that if statement part here, that makes sense. But then the else, it's just kind of weird how you can put anything there and you know what I mean? So you could just put true and then of course you get everything. Um, you can put false and then that's kind of like the intended output. All right, so now that we've looked at the two major ways of using a lambda with an if else statement, I think it's time to do a bit of a conclusion, a bit of a review. So again, let's put those functions side by side here, right? And so we have our uh, straight up normal expression, and then we have our longer expression where we use the if else syntax. And so you might be wondering, like, when would you ever want to use this if else syntax, if any? And I do have an answer for you. And that answer would be probably nested if else statements would be the only situation, at least the only one that I can think of. If you can think of more, please feel free to share them in the comments. And so what I would say is that if you're not going to use a nested if else, just use this syntax. There's really no reason to um, have this longer syntax, which could be a little bit error prone if you don't set up your else correctly. But anyway, Moving on, let me show you what a nested if else might look like. So instead of having that false here, you want to add some brackets and we're going to have our nested if else statement. And so we could do say x if, um, I don't know, d in x else false. And that should return all three of our values because of course the there's a d in, in dog, right? So just a reminder, my list, cat, dog, cow, and we could modify this and say, um, I don't know, if z in x. And of course, none of these three strings have z in it. So here we're just going to have our cat and cow. So that's kind of cool, right? So we have a nested if else, and we're saying, okay, so we're gonna filter it through. If it's got c, cool. And if not, we're gonna go into the else, and then we're gonna do another assessment. And so if z is in x, then we're going to let it go. Otherwise, false, we're going to filter it out. So we have a nested if else statement. <coughs> Last thing I would mention is do your best to include um, both of these in the original assessment. Like th this statement could easily be rewritten um, to just be, uh, to not have to be nested, right? But, you know, maybe there are some that were that you would have to nest it. But in any case, um, I think this is pretty cool. I think we've gone pretty in-depth on if-else statements in lambdas in the filter built-in function. There's probably no, no other video out there on YouTube going into this much depth. So hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please like, please subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.